Now let's consider case study research design. When we're designing research, we've got a certain number of components to consider. The research question, the propositions, the unit of analysis, the logic, and the criteria we're going to use for interpreting our findings. These are our five basic building blocks. When we're considering our research, we need to think in terms of the questions we're going to ask and the propositions that arise from that. Research questions are the first thing you need to consider when you're designing your research. Research questions don't necessarily point you towards what you should study. What you need to do is make sure you're thoroughly embedded in your literature, understand where there's a knowledge gap and then think, well, what's the question that I need to ask to address that knowledge gap? Propositions, again, likely arise from literature. You may find that for in, in this example, literature that says trust is enhanced with blockchain implementation. Well, how is that the case? And why is that the case? And where is that the case? And this proposition therefore helps guide, guide the uh, examination, the study, the research that you're going to do. Propositions may also arise from purpose. Uh, it might be an issue or a challenge that you've seen and it drives and creates a purpose for your study. The unit of analysis provides the boundary for your research. It's the main subject or entity that forms the central focus for what you're doing, for what your research will comment on. Your unit of analysis should be determined by the research question, hence you've got to set your research question really carefully. If your research question doesn't clearly lead to a clearly specified unit of analysis, then you need to revisit it. It's going to be too vague. The unit of analysis may differ in scale. You might look at a global market, an industry, a policy, a supply chain, a firm, a geography, an area. Beware of confusion. A geographic area is not the same as a small group. Services, for instance, may operate in different areas uh, and th those areas may, be, may not be standard geographic boundaries. Persons included within a case must be distinguished from those excluded. Again, that's about clear boundary setting. Time is also a very important boundary. When does the case study analysis start and stop? What's included and what's excluded? These are all very important when considering what the unit of analysis is. So what's the logic for linking the data to propositions? What's the criteria for interpreting findings? Well, multiple pieces of data may all correspond to one theoretical proposition you're exploring. One piece of data may also correspond to multiple propositions, in which case you're going to have to use that data multiple times. You've got to take great care to guard against contradicting yourself and also tautology. That's using one piece of evidence again to support that claim you've made from that piece of evidence itself. You've also got to guard against something called logical fallacy or circular reasoning. The example here, you know, two's a number, one's a number, so two equals one because they're both numbers. <clears throat> You've got to really be careful about this sort of thing. The criteria for interpreting findings often requires you to look for commonality and patterns in your data. Those patterns are often emergent from the question or the literature. Propositions usually logically suggest the approach you might take. And the approach really needs to be grounded in a theoretical framing. So your framing from theory should help you guide the way you interpret your findings. I always try and make sure that any questions I ask are grounded in theory. They're either testing that theory or they're seeking to expand it. So when I look at the answers, I know what the theory is. I look at the answers and I can say, OK, that either agrees, it disagrees. And if it disagrees, why? And we then hope to uh, add new knowledge and expand on where we are. Theoretical development is key. Uh, <clears throat> why do you need to worry about theory? Because your PhD and getting your PhD is contingent on you contributing some new ideas. Uh, the PH is philosophy, from the Greek word philosophia, meaning love of wisdom. <clears throat> D, doctorate, Latin verb docare, meaning to teach. So PhD is somebody who teaches wisdom. 
So the PhD requires you to teach and share original thoughts. You are going to be wise at the end of this. We tend to share via publication, conferences, seminars. That's the way we teach. To demonstrate originality, you need to know what we don't know, what came before, and that's why the literature review is so important. You're effectively a philosopher. You're creating original thought, and there's some great philosophers out on the side there.